Hello and welcome to the Hedonistic Way at Midday Show. I am Renee Main, and here we are after a three week break and we're just enter entering into the next series of the show and as always we have an amazing guest today. She is really a bundle of pure bliss and I really felt inspired to bring Tani on the show today because she is absolutely one of the most authentic, genuine people that I know and she exudes and speaks her truth and there's no mask and it's just, it's refreshing and everything that she says always resonates. She is live watching on the show now. Hello, Bella. I'm going to try and bring you in. Yes. I'm adding you in now to the show and I'm sure we will have another amazing conscious conversation to share with you guys who really want to disrupt the status quo. Hello, beautiful woman. Hello, darling. How are you? I'm awesome. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Really good. I'm all ready. Yay. Ready. Ready. Yes. I love your letter print. Oh, thank you. I'm just getting everything <laughs> all sorted because I don't have a tripod. It's not very professional of me, but I just don't. Okay. That's... Even for your, because you do like your monthly vlogs. So mm. you need a tripod. <laughs> I do. I really do. And when you asked me the other, told me the other week a tripod's handy, I'm like, yes. Yes, a tripod is handy. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, it's funny. <laughs> I've been carting around this tripod for, oh, probably like the whole time since I've been online. So it's probably like 12 years old. But towards the end, it was a leg would fall out and then a clip was broken and I was still <laughs> lugging it to every single jam by events that I run. Um, and <laughs> people would look at it and go, what is that? Um, <laughs> and just on the weekend, I was up at my mum's and we were clearing out some of her stuff because she's passed away. Mm. And, um, and so this tall boy got taken out and underneath was this beautiful tripod sparkly what? in its plastic i was like mum you a freaking genius thank you so much and we set Aww. it up last night and it's wicked it's so, it's way better than mine I, like she's never used it oh <laughs> it's like her little gift to you yeah, yeah, it was. Aww. We didn't even know it was there. And had we not moved that tall boy, then, yeah. So there you go. I have Aww. a brand new tripod today. Yay, <laughs> that's amazing. And you're shinier because of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want to get into it. And I was saying in the intro, Bella, is every time, we've been connected for quite a few years now. We and have. And every time you show up, you're, you're you, you're you. And I think maybe that's the first question that I want to ask you then is your love for self is so prominent and your self-acceptance is, real, is, is really something that I admire. You own who you are. You're really gentle in that approach, but there's also a real fierceness there <laughs> as well. So I want to ask you, what is your journey with the love and respect and honour that you have for yourself? Mm. Oh, well, thank you for seeing my gentleness because I actually am a juicy, juicy mama of softness, but I'm also a fierce motherfucker, right? Like there's just, there's both. I'm both. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the paradox as we all are, right? Um, so the funniest thing is, is that 
always I've just never known how to not be me. Like it's literally, it's like I've been put here. It's the only thing I'm good at. It's the only thing that I do really well. And it, this has been forever. And I get that that might seem weird or that might seem, you know, but there's so much layers. And of course, I've still had to do the self-love journey and, and I've still had to go through the fucking fire, right? Like we all have to do that anyway. But I think that the one thing that's always kept me really solid in who I am is this this uh, knowing and and showing up even from a young age, just going, well, this is me. And and I remember even when I was like nine years old and you had to do like this weird thing, what would be on your grave site? Like why were teachers telling us to do like, what would be on your grave head? Like, you know, the, the, the head of your grave. And a teacher said to me the word vivacious, like I'm nine and she's calling me vivacious. And I was like, wow. And, and I look back at some of the work that I was doing in primary school and I was just a friggin' nut job. Like I look at this stuff that I was writing, like literally I was writing, I'm going to be rich and famous and you're not, and you like whatever my teacher's name are, I'm not giving you a cent, but I'll give you my signature now. And just like weird shit. Um, so I've always had this spunk, I suppose. And, and when uh, you know, since moving into what I do and, and who, and, and, you know, speaking and, and doing everything that I do, you know, often people are like, you know, thank you for this or, you know, beautiful things. But the thing is, is that the only answer I've ever got is the only thing I know how to do good is be me. And I, that has a lot to do with my chart. Obviously I'm an astrologer first and foremost, that's my jam. That's what I've been doing since I was nine. Um, and knowing who I am, helps with the acceptance and that's why I love teaching astrology and talking about it because there's such a level of whether it's competition or segregation or or whatever it is in society you know especially you know women up against women and all this sort of stuff that we all have to see and and, and be you know fed all these lies um but the thing is is that when you know your own journey and you know your own self all of that just falls away like it just it literally just goes because all of a sudden you're like but I'm actually, you know, I'm my purpose. I am here. I am my purpose. It's nothing outside of myself. Mm-hmm. It's not achieving this or doing that or doing this. It's not this constant hustle. Um, it's just me. And and I want to share that with everyone, that it's just you and that that's big enough and that is enough, right? Uh, mm-hmm. But but the, but the I, I suppose my chart... Uh, you know, is we're all unique and we're all different. I totally get that. You know, I feel like everyone, you know, feels like the outsider when they're a kid. They all look back now. They're on and go, oh, I was different. I was different. And we all were different. Like we're all, you know, hilarious when we were kids. Kids are weird and strange. <laughs> like, you know, we say weird shit. We do weird shit. But yeah. the thing with me is, is that I've never, I've never sacrificed who I am for anyone else. I don't go into, uh, you know, a meeting or meet different people high up low up whatever I just always show up as who I am and it's never been a problem for me and I know in society people have so many layers and you know masks and facades and they're scared to be who they are and maybe that's why I was put here is because it's actually the only thing I'm good at there is never a mask and you know it's not to say that I'm not human and I don't fuck up and and stuff like that but I think that because it's the only thing I'm good at speaking and, and, you know, and I would say, a, you know, I, I love watching you. So, you know, I feel that I love your integrity and your respect and your journey as well that you've shared. Um, I love when you do those, um, the jam things. Did you just call it a jam? Yeah. I love yeah. watching. I've watched some of those and I love those because they're like poetry, right? And they're just delicious. I love them. So I think that, but I know that for some people it's more of a journey to get to that space, you know, in their twenties, they've sort of hidden who they are or you know I'm doing what society expects and I suppose I've always been a rebel or I've always just gone society's a lie and I'm not really a part of it so I've never bought the story and you know Mm. yeah and and I suppose for a lot of people they bought the story very early on because their parents bought the story and their parents parents bought the story so they're doing a lot of uh, you know they're doing a lot of um, unconditioning whereas because I was awakened so to speak quite early I haven't I don't have 30 years of society's conditions telling me who to be I've got 
zero years in my eyes, obviously a little bit of childhood, but ultimately even then, like I ran away from home and was pregnant at 16. My parents were atheists. You know, my dad, Mm -hmm. my parents smoked pot, grew pot. Like I didn't grow up with a very traditional family. It wasn't a great childhood, but at the same time they were, they were black sheep. You know, I used to call out, we used to live next door to beautiful Christians. And I would say that we're the Simpsons and they're the Flanders. I mean, that's just how we worked it because my family was fucking crazy. And hence the reason I ran away at 15. And hence the reason I raised my children differently. However, I'm grateful for my family. Um, It's just, I grew up quite unorthodox, I suppose. You know, my dad was a very, you know, and he's passed away. So I I feel your heart losing a parent. Uh, It changes you uh, a lot. Um, uh, yeah, it moves something in you that's mm, it, very raw. And I, I think that the most special thing is, I don't know about you, yours is more, your, your mum's passing is more recent than mine, but, um, the messages that my dad sends to me, especially the first year, the first year for me was the most difficult. I cried mm-hmm. myself to sleep every night. Um, and yeah, and there was just signs constantly. I would dream about him, you know, his name's David. And, you know, I'd just have like all of a sudden in front of me in a moment, Dave's removals or something like that. Just, you know, all the beautiful things, just so there was so many and there still is, but not as many. And I think that first year is such a black, hard grief stricken time that they need to be with us and then there's oh I'm getting goosebumps and oh it's you know and then there's this this level of lifting and you know a bit of a bit of okay you know you're going to be okay and um yeah anyway segue segue but yeah it's (laughs) it's yeah my dad was a very very eccentric man and when I look at his astrology chart he has his son which is your sun sign conjunct Uranus and Uranus is the planet of chaos and revolutionary genius, like eccentricity, right? And having those two really close together shows someone who is a genius, but he was still very much in ego here. And and we've spoken and he gets that now, but, um, but ultimately, yeah, there was a lot of that for dad, but he was just, yeah, he was eccentric and different. You know, he listened to Triple Z, he subscribed to Triple Z, you know, we grew up listening to Cypress Hill and the Dead Kennedys, like in, you know, like crazy loud. So, um, yeah, I've just never, I, I feel like, you know, coming back to the question of authenticity is just, I don't know any other way to be. I don't know how to not just be myself. I don't care if you've got a million dollars, I'll still go, oh, what's your sign? Or you feel like a Virgo to me. Like, you know, I don't care that they might judge me. I, I'm not impressed by money and status mm-hmm. and usual things that society tells us to be impressed by. So for me, it's been not as hard, I suppose, to just be me, but I get with the conditioning, there's just like thick layers, like bricks that people have to just peel away. And I hope that, you know, that's what my work, you know, helps people to do. Absolutely. You said something um, earlier and that was, and I was reading it as well um, when I was writing, writing your bio, is you speak about is I am my purpose. And mm. in I'll say like today's society, but, you know, with the, you know, the online world and the online entrepreneurship and, you know, and spirituality is now, you know, being taught across, you know, every single corner and, um, and people bang on about finding your purpose and living your purpose. And I kind of feel like it's something that, we're constantly trying to look for and yeah. it almost feels like I know for me it kind of for a while it felt really unattain- unobtainable because it was constantly outside of myself and so I'm really curious to what's your thoughts around I am my purpose and I guess how can people begin to really see that their purpose is not anything that they need to get or gain or find out. So share mm. a little bit about that, please. Mm. Yeah, and, and, and it is, you, you know, it is in this spiritual, what I call entertainment industry. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in it, but I'm not of it. And that's the biggest thing for me. Yeah. I've been in, in this for 20 years, but completely out of mm. it. I still feel like I'm on my own island. 
um, when yeah. it comes to the spiritual entertainment industry because yeah. that everyone's trying to sell you something, right? And purpose just yeah. is great, you know, now and then everyone gets onto the relationship stuff. Oh, you just throw that word twin flame around, fuck, you've got a million followers, right? <laughs> like because this is what this is what people are human beings biologically are are taught, you know, we want connection and and just watch Brene Brown's work. I mean, my godfather, watch The Call to Courage, which is just amazing. I mean, she studies vulnerability. She studies the brain, which is another reason I love her. It's not just, it's, it's really a study of, oh my goodness, go away, whatever that is. Yes. Um, Uh, It's really the study of what's going on and what humans need. And what humans do need is connection, community. You know, that's what we do need. Mm -hmm. So, of course, these, like, hype words that get thrown around, people just latch onto. And purpose is one of them. Um, Mm -hmm. My husband said to me years ago, which was a beautiful blessing, he said this to me on my birthday, actually. Um, He said, uh, Steve Jobs had written that thing, you know, like, you know, don't, don't, you know, don't be caught up in dogma, follow, you know, find your purpose. And everyone talks about that whole, you know, find your purpose and you'll never work a day in your life. Well, as you know, I've still got astrology charts to do. I'm still working, right? Like, it's not like I'm not working. Um, But my husband said, he goes, he goes, the problem with that is exactly this is it's like, there's something outside of our, ourselves to attain, like find that, that thing. And then you're free, then you're free. And then my husband said, he goes, but the thing, Tiani, is is that he goes, what you're doing is the right thing. He goes, because you just live your life with purpose and with yeah. passion. And that yeah. really flung around for me. I was like, yes, babe, this is going to start something really revolutionary here. Because if you're living your life with purpose, and, and I always have because sort of Buddhism was a real sort of, you know, I, I started really uh, 20 years ago studying a lot of Buddhism. So... So that all, you know, that all depicts in, you know, before enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. After enlightenment, guess what? You're chopping wood and you're carrying water. So for me, Mm. doing the housework, doing the dishes, hanging my washing, everything to me has a purpose and I live my life with that purpose. And I am, yes, a naturally passionate person, um, but but I live my life with passion. It doesn't matter if I'm having a conversation with someone or I'm doing the dishes with my husband or we're watching a program or we're, you know, or we're going for a car ride. Like, you know, there's passion and purpose in every moment and it's, you know, and it's in the ordinary stuff. Right. But the thing is, is that yes, the industry has sold us something that's just a lie. And for, you know, a, a big tool for me is always going to be astrology. I can't get away from that because when you know who you are, and you can accept that, you know, that this is your purpose because everyone wants to be Oprah and unfortunately everyone yes. can't be Oprah, right? Like just because mm. you've got a following or just because this or just because this, you know, these days everyone, you know, Instagram, you know, famous and all this sort of thing. Like it's very different from what Oprah did and Oprah's mm. chart depicts fame. Like I've, I've seen her chart and, and she's, you know, she's got some stuff in there and some, and some charts do, some charts don't. And, and for yeah. me, what I've found with people is if I read their chart to them um, and and highlight some areas because so many people are putting this square peg into a round hole but oh but because I'm into crystals it must mean I need to teach them no not necessarily maybe it's for you everyone's feeling like I know something I need to go and share it with everyone Mm -hmm. that's that's probably one of the biggest problems in the spiritual industry is one person does one you know one weekend of something and all of a sudden they're an expert but they're not because they've got no experience and when you can when you can cut away from even that industry and go well actually we're our purpose because we're alive we have to do us first we have to be solid in who we are everyone wants to change everyone else but no one wants to do the work you know and that's where this sort of you know everything's outside of myself and if I follow this path then I'll be happy and of course that's you know a huge lie you know that's a massive lie because in every moment you are given the ability to experience joy um, happiness abundance fulfillment it's only uh, your perception of what needs to be and it's often people are thinking it's outside of myself once I find my thing and and I always use Jamie Oliver as an example he is passionate about cooking right Do, don't you just love watching Jamie Oliver cook I do I love it I just think he's fantastic but is he the best yeah. chef in the world hell no of course yeah. he's not 
No. He's not. But what is he? Yeah. He's passionate. He is so passionate about food that that's why we watch him. It's got nothing to do like, yeah, he cooks some great meals with five ingredients, legend. But the thing is, is that we watch him because of his passion. And some people, maybe you're passionate about gardening or, you know, and that might not pay your bills. And, and that's a big question I posed uh, a few years ago. I said, what if your passion and your purpose didn't pay your bills? Are you okay with people yeah. are? That's the problem. They want they they want to find a passion or a purpose and then for them to for that to pay their bills. And what I see more than anything is people's passions becoming their problems because they're not paying their bills. And that's a huge that's a huge part of this industry. Um, why so many, you know, self development things, you know, go under and, and people, you know, yeah, go to one circle. Now I want to hold circles as a thing. You know, holding space for someone yeah. takes a lot of energy and commitment and time and practice. It's not, you know, people look at so oh I could do that really We've lost you. <laughs> I will see if I can bring Tiani back in. Thank you, guys. Bear with me for those of you who are still watching. We're just adding her back in now. And Kelly says, wow, that is so spot on for me. Felt to study, put it on hold to do more inner work and connection to my passions. That's all right. We, I'm just adding you back in now, so you should um, be able to join us any moment now. And as she is joining us again, um, I think that is really, for, you know, the 10 years that I've been online now is that everyone is preaching that you can, you know, your passion and your purpose to create a business um, from that and neither are oh, beautiful. I'm so glad. Maybe it was because we both, we, uh, everyone needed a moment to reflect. Absolutely, I love that. Um, which is huge. It is absolutely huge. Um, oh, jeepers. It's, um, you know, it feels like, there you are. I know. I It just went, thank you for joining. <laughs> Do you want to share this? Yeah. And I'm like, I think I'm still joined. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't, don't go anywhere on me. Okay. Sorry. That's all right. So you were talking about, you know, people feeling like we had to make money off of our passion and purpose. What would you say to people who are feeling that right now is because we've had some comments about how you know it's really resonating for for people and they've lived this i think you know i want to ask you know yes you have to love your job and do what you love in whatever however you serve what is the difference between serving with heart and creating a business that you love how is that different to then you not having to share your passion and your purpose for profit? Does that make sense? Mm, it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I suppose, you know, a big thing is your why. You know, why are you doing what you're doing? Because a lot of people these days, the whys are because because that person's doing it and making money. So I could do it and make yeah. money. And that's and, and if people yeah. are really honest with themselves, that's yeah. why. That's their why. The the thing the thing is is that everywhere you go, there you are. Okay. You cannot escape yourself in, in any job situation or whatever. You could change jobs a million times, so on and so forth. And the thing is, is, oh, I had something really good I was going to say then. Oh, I always love that. Hey, I love, I love a live, I love a, a, a Facebook live where you're just about to say something and it just drops out. Um, the thing is, is that it is about your why, asking and being honest with yourself. Why do I want to do this? Is it because everyone else is doing it? Is it because, uh, you know, I want success or fame or, or whatever? And, and it's really deep. Yes, that's what I was going to say. For me personally, I can't speak for every, everyone else, but all I'm actually doing is, is, is teaching what I live and what I love. 
It's nothing outside of mm. myself. And I think that's a big thing. You know, for some people like me, my business is just who I am. It's an extension of who I am. It's become a business. I haven't had to change who I am, you know, to to yeah. to become my business. I don't just go and study astrology and then go and teach astrology. I am astrology. I've been into this since I was nine. So I think that that's a really big thing with uh this purpose stuff and being in tune. I th- am I breaking up a little bit? Yeah, your sound is, but you seem to be back now though. Yeah, because, yeah, and I, I don't know if it's just this room that I'm in. I'm thinking maybe I should move. Shall I move? Yeah, yeah up to I'm you. I'm just thinking if I, can get a, yeah. if I can get yeah. a better internet connection because I don't want to drop out again. So let's go on a little wander through my house Um, (laughs) and just pop this down here. Oh, there's my boobs. (laughs) Sorry, it's it's the perfect show for that though, isn't it? (laughs) Um, Okay, there we go. Um, So I couldn't not do this if I tried, you know what I mean? Like I have never worked a normal job. I'm not someone who has come from corporate into spiritual, which there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I I don't think that there is anything wrong with that. I'm not Mm. saying it as, as it's like, it's a wrong thing, but for me, I have never, you know, my husband had to marry me knowing that I will never have a nine to five job ever. I will never do what society expects me to do because I, I, I'm not, I'm not someone who is driven buy money or success. Um, I've raised my children. They've never had to go to before or after school care, nothing like that because I am here for them because all of a sudden, like my eldest, 21, moved out of home, there goes the time. So for me, that has been really important. And ultimately, if I wasn't doing this, you know, I don't know what else I'd been doing. And, And I suppose the question always comes to what would you do for free? Yeah. And, and that's like, it's, that's a bit of a segue to your passion. What would you do for free? What would you do every single day if you could be paid for it money wise? Yeah. And for some people that's cooking and gardening or whatever it is. But the thing is, is that the thing is, is that then people think, well, if I do love gardening or baking for my children or sewing that, the hobby then becomes what they feel like the main income needs to be. And then all of a sudden it's not a hobby anymore. It's a problem. And uh, the the book um, big magic by Elizabeth Gilbert is so the whole book is about what we're talking about, which I, and I love this book so much because, you know, at the beginning where she talks about the woman who loves ice skating or or, or skating or something like that in the morning. And and, and you, you think when you're reading it, that all of a sudden she's going to quit a job and become an ice skater. No, guess what she does? She just ice skates every morning. She ice skates for joy. And that's where that question come for me. What if your passion and purpose never paid you a cent? Would you be okay with it? And Mm. this has been my passion and purpose for my whole life. And I didn't get paid a cent and I was okay with it. And yes, I've worked in crystal shops and, you know, I was an aerobics instructor and, you know, I've done different things that all suit me being a mum first and foremost. But the thing is, is that this, this has never been off for me, you know, astrology wasn't something, Oh, I liked it when I was a teenager. And then I got back into it when I was 40. That's just, that's just not my story is, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that if that happens for someone. But I think, I think we need to move away from thinking that you have to have money from your purpose and passion, because what about Mm -hmm. if you lived your life with purpose and passion, change the words around a little bit and see what unfolds from there instead of it Mm -hmm. being this, I must achieve this. I must do this instead of just completely changing the dialogue with yourself and saying, well, actually I'm going to live and do everything I do, whether it's around the house, whether it's the way I make love to my partner, whether it's the way I drive my car, hug my kids with purpose and, and find the joy in the ordinary moments instead of wanting to be Oprah and having We just, we broke up on that last little bit and we lost you instead of being Oprah. What did you say after that? Instead of trying to be, uh, everything has to be extraordinary. Let it be ordinary. Let the joy come from the ordinary moments. And again, this was in Brene Brown's um, 
called to courage have you watched that yet no i haven't seen it yet so do and yeah. just i won't yeah. i won't ruin it because it's a beautiful moment but she she talks about the ordinary moments and when the ordinary and when the ordinary moments change because those people aren't around anymore it's the ordinary you want not the extraordinary you know and that's a big thing that's a big thing with my teaching and and what i what i you know am yeah that's it's so true and that's something that you know and i think a lot of people you know who are watching and will continue to watch is that a lot of us do have that innate fire within us where we felt like we were born to do something significant mm. and with that we want to do something extraordinary mm. you know we want to do something huge and so we look at Richard Branson and Oprah and you know all of these people Steve Jobs you know all of these people mm. that have done extraordinary things and a few years ago I actually realized that I had that thought of what if I don't do anything extraordinary? Mm. What if in this lifetime, what if I'm just ordinary? Mm -hmm. Like would I actually be okay with that, you know? Mm. And with that, I think you be, you're able to then get, a, you get, you're able to get pleasure in moments, in mm. all moments because with that is you, you're not happy. You're constantly thriving and striving for something that's outside of yourself because you're not quite Oprah yet or you're not mm. quite Richard Branson yet. Mm. And I think that's where that huge disconnect come from within us where we started to look for purpose and happiness that's outside of us. Mm. Mm. I want to move on to astrology if we can because that is absolutely your jam. And you've spoken about the charts and, you know, people once they understand their charts. Mm. Um, what is something that most people are really shocked by when they see their charts? Something that they didn't expect or what? what? Um, more so... More so just the fact that, uh, you know, you can read everything in the chart. So I could maybe, you know, and, and we're not always as astrologists hitting the nail on the head because we can interpret the chart, but we're not living it. You know, the chart is being experienced by the person. So even still after all these years, I, I still love to ask questions and probe and how does that play out for you? Because this is how it can look from our perspective. And I can see that it's playing out for you like that in this area, but blah, blah, blah. But the thing is, is, you know, what, what people sort of are shocked about usually is that oh yeah that is my relationship with my dad or or this did happen like I don't see my dad and that's you know I can see that in someone's chart if the dad was you know an addict or wasn't around or mm -hmm. so on and so forth or people's wounds I love working around um, Chiron and Chiron's the wound and so wow. so really discovering the wound of the chart the wound of the self to become the warrior or the warrioress and I think that it's really important mm -hmm. for us to know our wounds and to know all aspects of ourself and that's that's the that's the liberating thing with astrology for me is there's so much freedom once you know mm -hmm. who you are and all of the all of the masks and facades and 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 layers or competition or uh, you know pushing the square peg into the round hole which is very that purpose passion stuff and just go oh you know that's what's happened for one client she's doing all these workshops and trying to like do circles and do this and nothing was ever happening so again square peg into the round hole and then when she's seen that most of her planets were on the bottom of her chart or in her first house or whatever it was like oh this is actually more for yourself why can't why don't people do this sort of stuff just to know who they are that's the difference it's like oh, i'm doing a workshop to then go out and uh, and change everyone's lives my life's in the gutter but i'm going to go and change everyone's lives and the hot tip is yeah. is if your life's in the gutter you're not changing other people's lives i'm sorry we can be we yeah. are imperfect i'm not saying that as a as a psychologist or a psychiatrist or or a healer or, or you, we can't you know the word imperfect says I'm perfect like you know that's the hello Audrey Hepburn like she's a Taurus just saying like me but the thing is is that um you know we are perfect as we are but the thing is is that 
you you need to be very cautious with the people that you're giving your energy to, your time, your energy, and your money to, because I know copious amounts of people who are in miserable marriages and all this sort of stuff yet out on the grand stage i'm changing lives i'm like yeah but you've been doing the same thing Mm. for 20 years nothing's grown from you because guess what you're still not doing the work yeah and energetically and astrologically at the moment everything's crumbling like hello notre dame notre dame is the physical manifestation of all this Capricorn energy that we are in at the moment that has not happened since the 1500s. So this is really wow. massive stuff, okay, that we're in at the moment. And this is why the spiritual community is crumbling because everyone's built their lives or their personas or or who they are or their practice or their um, mastery tool. They've built it all on sand because if you don't even know yes. who you are, what the fuck are you doing? Exactly. That's why it's your purpose, your purpose. And I think the only thing that we're really here to do is know ourselves. And once we've got that as a solid foundation, then mm. everything's possible. But until then, until then it's like blinkers or there's like a veil or, you know, there's untruths or, you know, you're being that, I mean, um, Brene Brown said it great. Like, people that are still healing it's like stop taking your shit your unhealed shit out on other people you know heal your mm. shit and stop pro- projecting it onto other people she said it much better than that but it's it's these sorts of things that until you really know yourself and ground in and, and look mm. uh, astrology probably isn't the, you know of course i'm passionate about it and i think that everyone should know their charts but you know deep soul work that's what it is you know it's deep soul work it's the true acceptance and i think the word is awareness self-awareness is the biggest thing Mm -hmm. because when we are aware of the energy that you're taking everywhere and that you are creating absolutely everything yeah with your vibration well then then you're free and that's the the greatest thing that i love about um astrology and what i love to see with people is they light up like a christmas tree they take a breath they relax you know i've had one beautiful uh, ann alexon we both know beautiful ann a beautiful friend of both of ours and i read her chart for her and she was just like it's nearly it's it's she she had tears in her eyes she her heart opened and she said it's like you've given me permission to be myself you know that's a big thing with astrology it's like well this is actually who you are and why you're here so go out and be that but the thing that everyone has to remember too is what if what if extraordinary means that you check in on your neighbors that that are elderly what if that's an extraordinary thing you know i'm just about to and and i don't i don't think of myself as that this is extraordinary but the thing is is that even now i'm just sending this little care package to a client which i never do for people i'm not asking for her for money it's just some tools because her she's gone through a really really hard time and just even making that up for her i'm like these are the moments these are the moments that count you know, that's where it is. It's the everyday stuff that we do that really raises our vibration. So it's not yeah. such these big things. And, and that's that's what's extraordinary. You know, we're only mm. ordinary if we're asleep. You know, if we're not doing any work, if we're not being brave and having courage to show up in the yes. world and be who we are, you know. Mm. Mm, absolutely. I hope that answered the question. Absolutely. My tangent. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> no, I always see it as as a big balloon, you know, and it can be floating or it can be whatever. But if there's no, I feel like, you know, this spiritual entertainment industry, as you so beautifully um, call it, is that it's this beautiful grand thing that looks really pretty, but you can pop it really easily and it just disperses and it's gone you know um i want to ask you something that popped in and i'm really curious is when something is in someone's charts is can it can it change like you know is it mutable you know yeah does that make yeah sense? so yeah it does so the thing is is that Linda Goodman, an astrologer, she believes that um, even, you know, love can, you know, love can conquer the karma of your chart, right? And so as an astrologer, we say that a fool obeys his chart and a wise man rules it, okay? So, Uh, excuse me, that's the biggest thing, that a fool obeys his chart and a wise man rules it. Now, 
someone could have the potential like Oprah yet be a heroin addict. How does that change? If I can see that potential there yeah. again, because they're, you know, going into the shadow, the darker aspects, maybe they've got, you know, what's happening above us right now is activating our chart as well. So there's all these different sort of progressions mm-hmm. and transits and, you know, different sorts of ways of looking at the chart as it evolves, because of course it evolves, but mm-hmm. your birth chart is your blue tr- blueprint and we always go back to the birth chart the birth chart will show you yeah okay your wound is in a relationship house and usually if i meet someone with a with Chiron in the seventh house they're not in a relationship they've had many troubles with relationships it's there does it mean they're doomed hell no what it means is that they've got to activate that and then turn that wound into alchemy master it and yeah. then understand that when they're in a relationship they need to make changes on themselves they need to maybe stop projecting or they need to there'll be certain things you know it's about awakening the chart living the chart activating it and yes the chart evolves it's what's called a secondary progression so i can snapshot of my chart right now to go oh my sun's here and my moon's here am i always a taurus of course i am but there's different elements yeah. of of looking in not into the future but definitely definitely seeing sort of what's happening now, what's coming up, those sorts of things. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not so much that you're, it's, it, it, uh, yeah, it's, it's changeable and mutable definitely to a degree who and who, Mm. because we can change. But the thing is, is that there is this Mm. element of, yeah, if you've come here, you know, people say to me about my marriage and I get messages all the time, like, Oh, Mm. your marriage is amazing. All these sorts of things. And it's like, yeah, but Mm. me and my husband do have, soulmate connection you know as much as everyone wants to throw that shit around i will look at someone's Mm. chart and go yeah well me and my husband actually have that and that person that is maybe envious or or you know whatever of Mm. someone else's relationship but you might not be here to have that, you know, maybe in your past life, which we can see in a chart shows that you did have that. And in this life, it's about your children or about yourself or whatever. There's like a trillion, trillion different ways to, you know, interpret all these things. But I think the thing is, is that it can be, yeah. So in answer to your question, it's not so much that we change it, but we master it. I think that's the best way to put it is once you understand stuff and it can be the awareness. And like I said, so many people just feel like, a weight has lifted off their shoulder uh, like oh wow okay that's why that happened or that's why this is happening or that's why I attract that or that's why me and my mum x y and z that's why me and my sisters x y and z like you can see all of this in the chart and it's and it blows a lot of people away because they're just like oh my god this and this and this and it's you know but then you've got to not become a psychopath about it (laughs) you know you can't just go now it's ruling every tiny second and i'm just not even you know because again let's let's not be extreme in life right Yeah, and that's because that popped up when you were talking just then. So I'm glad that you touched on it. Is because when, like, everyone who, I mean, I'm not everyone, like, but, you know, there's quite a few people who have read, like, my my charts or people who have, you know, multiple different things. They've all said you are going to do something huge and you were born for the stage and you have, you will have an audience of thousands and thousands and thousands of people yeah and I want to ask is you know um what I'm trying to like just feel what the actual question is is you know I think with that then if there was an expectation of it's just going to happen you know it's like well this is just it and this is going to this is what's going to happen and it didn't happen as easily as what I felt like it was supposed to, or, you know, Mm. it's that idea of, well, it's in my charts, it's going to happen, but it's not the way it particularly rolled out. So Mm. I want to ask you then if it is in our charts and you know, because you you feel it, you know, um, how can we then, be at peace with, I guess, the divine timing of it or how can we not become a psychopath about it, you know, (laughs) and take it in, you know, um, not just, but do you know what I mean? Like just, yeah, yeah, like do the work still. And, yeah, and and so 
so I, I hear you, you know, because I've got a pretty, I've got a, a chart that I'm living out, which is, you know, being in front of people and stuff. And I totally thought it was going to happen earlier than it did, to be honest, because again, yeah. I've known about my chart for nearly 20 years and I'm like, oh, yeah. you know, and I still haven't written my book. I'm like, why haven't I written my book? Like, why is my book, why am yeah. I not on fucking book tours right now? And oh my God, I'm not living my chart <laughs> properly. But there has to be yes. a trust, you know, there does have to be a huge yes. trust. And and yeah. the thing, my biggest thing is, is if it's meant to be, you cannot fuck it up. And so there is definitely yeah. a divine timing when it comes to the chart. There's certain transits that are happening. Like I'm looking at all my next few years, like, yeah, my next, my next at least five years transits are all in my career house, in the public eye, traveling. It's all, and it's all already happening because I've been traveling into state, speaking at mind, body, spirit, and so on. So it actually has started. But the thing is, is that, there has to still be a surrender. Like you can't, it's just like us, like sitting back and expecting the house to be clean. Like we can't just expect it to yes. happen. And even if there's yes. something in the chart um, that yes. depicts, you know, whatever, like, you know, my eldest daughter has, she could be a famous actress. Like she could be, a, her mm. chart is so depicted, but she's mm. not doing any drama. She's not doing anything like that. I've told her this, but you know what? There are aspects there that could show this, but imagine if she never did. Would that be okay? Yeah, because that was still the life she was meant to live. So there has to be yes. this level of trust and this level mm -hmm. of not being so nitpicky. And I'm very passionate. Like every single day, my head's in astrology. Mm -hmm. Like that's all I do. Mm -hmm. And and it seems obsessive, but it's not because I don't just like go, oh, well, now I've got to look at what's happening in 10 minutes and 16 minutes and 58 minutes and 128 <laughs> minutes. Like, and then I need to see this and this because I want to live in the mystery of life too. You know, I know where things are going on because I know my chart. So I'm like, oh, I know that all this Capricorn energy is in my fourth house, in my mm -hmm. home house. But that what that gives me yeah. is the it's arming me with awareness. That's my biggest thing is that when you know what's going on, you can be armed with awareness. Can you can you stop a storm from happening? No. But can you be aware of it and go, oh, okay, there's a storm coming up. And, you know, and I, I've seen this with mine and my husband's chart. This this time last year, um, he had Chiron the wound in the sky on top of his moon. I mean, it, that sounds hard, doesn't it? Because guess what it is? And without even him yeah. knowing that, he knew that he needed to go camping by himself. The first time in 18 mm. years, he just said, I'm going to go camping by myself, babe, because I need to reconnect to the earth and just be with myself. And I'm like, yeah, baby. And, and I'm yeah. so proud of him because he's a very awakened man. But... But then I explained to him before he went what was going on in his chart. And it was just like he breathed a sigh of relief. He's like, well, when does Chiron get off my moon? And I'm like, oh, it's not for a while, but, but this is the hardest bit because the first hit's always the hardest bit, even if it takes another year or so, it, it's the first bit. And, but I, I seen that I, I, because I knew that that was happening, instead of being a reactive mole, I was just like, my husband's going through this. I'm going to support him, you know, and there's acceptance and support. And, and that's what I love about astrology. And that's why I am not intimidated by anyone. I mean, I mean I've met Louise Hay and Wayne Dyer and, you know, I've sat with Eckhart Tolle and Brandon Bays. Like I've done all of that stuff in my early twenties and I love it. And it's not a name dropping ego thing. It's just that I've done it. I've been there. And I, that, that's a lot of my base comes from quantum reality. You know, Joe Dispenza, or, you know, everyone loves Joe Dispenza now. And I've been doing that work for 20 years, you know, I mean, even now when I ask people, you know, have they heard of Brandon Bays? They're like, no. And I'm like, Oh my God. Like, you know, like this is, this is, the sort of juice this is quantum physics man but anyway but the thing yeah. is is that i've done all of that work and it's and, and it's the it's it's just about arming yourself with that awareness and having that solidity and the acceptance is what i was talking about that i'm literally mm -hmm. not intimidated or ruffled by anyone because how can i be i know myself i know my own chart your journey's your journey like i look to other people and i i cry in happiness like i watched the my kitchen rules finale last night i'm bawling because they've just won two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. you know yeah. other people's happiness really fills me up and that's because I'm very full in my own life. And I think I just read like this awesome meme the other day or meme, however you say it. And it was that, you know, a happy and fulfilled woman will always support other women. And I'm like, that's so true. And, you know, it's, it's only, and you see it, tall poppy syndrome, competition with women, you see it. And, and the only thing, no matter what that woman wants to say, you can only be jealous if you don't know, love and accept who you are. And you're unhappy, to be honest. You can only be jealous of someone else if you're unhappy. 
So if you're happy, where's jealousy have room to even slide in? It doesn't, right? Yeah, can you sometimes go to the beach and put on a bikini and go, oh, I wish I could wear that bikini. But then you get over it in about four milliseconds and just go, who the fuck cares? You know, like, um, you know, I'm having great sex. So fuck whatever. Like, you know, like that's the, that's the thing. Like it doesn't matter what someone else looks like. But the thing is, is that yeah. we're still women. And I'm, I'm just saying that those thoughts can be fleeting. They can come in, but it's, it, but jealousy can only take over when you honestly are very real with yourself and you're not happy in your life because when you're happy and abundant, your the joy overflows and you see someone else's life and you're just happy for them. You know, it's just awesome. It's great. And that to me comes from that level of acceptance and uh, commitment to the self and knowing the self and, and, and yeah, trusting the journey, trusting the path of the chart, you know, not having to be dictated by it. Yes. You're on stage and, and performing because yeah, that, you know, maybe your son's in the 10th house or something, or, you know, your son's in the, the fifth house or something. So you've got this, you know, big personality, you know, Jupiter would be probably strong in your chart. So we can see these things for people. It's the same when it comes to money. I love it because I don't believe in luck at all. Um, I believe in Jupiter. Jupiter is the lucky planet, but um We've got to use that word because it's sort of like a muggle word, luck. Um, but um, I don't believe in luck because wherever Jupiter is in our chart is where God has gifted it, you the, the blessings. And for some people, it's in their money house. So it's just like, that's why, you know, you know, some people how they just win stuff all the time. Like um, yeah. they just always yeah. win stuff. Like, oh, I put $5 in the pokies random because I was out for dinner, $1,000. I'm like, oh my God, that's amazing. Like, you know, I don't do that, but that's okay. Like I'm okay with that. Cause it's not in my chart. Yeah. Like I have, I have Jupiter yeah. somewhere else in my chart that gives me like a friggin' mm. trust that goes beyond belief. So yeah, I think that there just becomes this level of acceptance when you know your chart, but yeah, not being so ruled by it in getting back to the question yeah. that there has to be surrender. That's the biggest thing. Everyone wants to hustle and know and control shit and you have to, mm let go of control and let life have its way with you. That's the best way to live is to let life have its way with you. And, and, and mm -hmm. life is then just a complete joy. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. What if then something is in the charts um, and you know that, okay, the next 12 months is going to be really shit. You mm -hmm. know, it's going to be really challenging or whatever. Yeah. How, what can people do to still find that happiness and joy within every single day without this kind of, you know, show reel in the background going, oh, crap, but it's in my charts and I know that the next 12 months is going to be hard work. Well, I suppose that the thing is, is that when everyone can just to, to surrender that maybe there's always going to be some level of work anyway, um, yes. and to not allow outside influences to taint on some level as well. Like everyone, the thing is, is that everyone's like, oh, when everything calms down out there or when this happens, when I get my shit together, no, it's, it's all happening now. Okay. Like nothing's going to yes. calm down. This is the new normal that we're living in now. Yes. No exactly. energies are going to just like, you know, like calm and filter away. Like this is it now. It's us meeting these new energies. But the thing is, is that like, I, I know certain things that are happening in my chart, but it, I don't let myself become, again, dictated by that because, you know, happiness is still a choice. If there's a shit day and I'm like, oh yeah, I can feel that. Oh, you know, like usually if we all bunker down and everyone's just feeling like all gloomy, like my daughter goes, is the moon in, in Pisces, mum? And I'm like, yeah, babe, it's in Pisces. Let's just eat food and not even talk. Um, and maybe let's just cry or something. So everything will be okay. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, is that, you know, everything, this too shall pass. Everything passes. And yeah. even if, yeah. even if there's a transit happening, look, the thing is, is that, Pluto is going through someone's, yeah, everyone's house on some level now. And if you've got stuff in Capricorn, mm -hmm. well, you might be going through a bit of a tough time if you are a Capricorn or your moon's in Capricorn or you've got planets in Capricorn. I mean, the Capricorn heavy stuff at the moment is really big. But the thing is, is that, yeah, but guess what it's doing? It's transforming you. It's, it's, it's removing shit that no, you know, no longer serves you anymore. And I think a big thing, most hard times, so to speak, are, uh, purely a uh, removing of the old and, and it's just that people can't let go if people let go well then it's not as hard as you're making it we we are the ones still in control of our lives we're the ones still making our lives so that's a yeah. really important aspect to remember is that yes these things yeah. are happening utilize it 
you know, understand yeah. it. Be for, for, forearmed, you know, forewarned as being forearmed. So you go in ready, you know, like, oh, that day will be the, the big day because that's when it sort of peaks, you know, and it's like, yeah, okay, I, I feel that. But on that day, I'm going to remove myself from society. I mean, I had a really full-on aspect a few years ago happened for me like Mars not a huge fan of Mars he's all anger and stuff like that but um and he was hitting my ascendant and I just and just everything my husband was doing I was just like I said I've got to go now for a night goodbye <laughs> because if I didn't I would have lost my shit and it wasn't his fault it was me I was yeah. just having my own sort of stuff and I went and my friend sort of uh, gave me a beautiful process to go through she's an amazing uh, healer and so we sort of I processed something but I was aware of it and I didn't let it you know mm. I didn't let it ruin a whole year a whole day a whole week. I just went okay I just need this time out right now so because this isn't yeah. gonna you know, I'm not, I'm not taking my story out on people. You know, it's just something that I pride myself mm. in doing. I'm just, I've never been that person, but um, awareness is the key to freedom to me. Wouldn't you rather be a, a aware of something that, you know, is sort of coming up and there's never going to be a whole year that's going to be hard. You know, when I lost my dad, um, you know, I, I would still, I, I say that every year is amazing. Like, because the year doesn't make me, I make my own year and January one comes around. It doesn't mean anything, you know, like, uh, you know, numerologically it does. And, and astrologically um, on some levels, but the thing is, is that we are the keys to our own lives. We are the creators. So yes, be aware of what's going on. But if you're, and, and I, and, and you know what, I'm a part of a million astrology groups with a million people. And I, I see it day in and day out people do they blame the astrology my life's this my life's this i can't get a man i can't get a woman i've had pluto hit five of my planets this is horrible my life's been shit yeah okay it's been a big transformation but this is no dress rehearsal my friends like cheer up <laughs> cheer up buttercup yeah. because yeah, yeah there's going to be some stuff but you can't let it just define yeah. you constantly no no absolutely yeah oh, there you are um, I, and I love what you just said just before is that, you know, um, is that, you know, we're waiting for this, all the stars to be aligned and all the planets to be perfect, mm. for things to be easy again and for us to be in flow. But I love what you said is that it's not going to slow down. It's mm. about us letting ourselves expand into it and just mm. move with it and finding that because you know, like the last, you know, the last eight months have been probably the most challenging of my life. Um, mm. But at every layer, and there's been multiple tears. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, but at every challenge and every fear and everything else, once you kind of breathe into it, and there's another unfolding, you know, mm. and there's something to be really be grateful for in that um, because that's what it's about. It's about, you know, as, you know, Ricky Jane would say from the Institute is, you know, meeting your fear. Mm. Um, and I think that there's such power in that, you know, it's because, you know, people say feel the fear and do it anyway but I kind of think we need to listen to the fear, you mm. know, and we need to expand into that. And that's not a bad or good thing. It's just yeah. what is. And I think that there's real empowerment, you know, in that is when we really honour that as well and not deem it as good or bad, I think. Mm. Um, I want to ask you... You've spoken about Capricorn. I want to ask you what is unfolding right now? So for those people who are watching, um, what can people – so what's kind of going on and what can people do to allow themselves and maybe create the space to expand into that and explore that and understand. I was trying to think of the word that you used and, and you said, you know, and how to understand what's going on without it, you know, paralyzing us. Mm. So what the thing, thing is, is, oh, oops, hang on. Sorry. I've just, how did that happen? Now I've, I've, <laughs> Okay, it's just because it's on my phone and then bloody notifications come up. Um, yes, do not disturb. 
question. Oh, gosh. Um, the thing is, is that uh, this is the new normal. We have moved into the new paradigm, the new earth. There's no more waiting. There's no more when's ascension coming. This is it. Everyone wanted it to be sparkles and diamonds. But the thing is, is that we have to walk through the fire to become it. And until we sort of move into uh, Aquarius, uh, this, this new Aquarian age, which really kicks off at the end of 2020 and then when Pluto finally moves out of Capricorn, which is mid-2020s, um, you know, mm -hmm. we're going to be moving life will no longer look the same at the moment this is destruction of the old paradigm the patriarchy hello notre dame like it's mm. all this is all being released uh we we are moving into a, a more feminine sort of space uh receiving yin not so domineering control and success especially until may next year as the the mm. the, the moon's nodes are actually in cancer and capricorn and and cancer and capricorn you know signify cancer is the mother cancer is the moon you know capricorn's the father it's saturn it's stern it's authority and what we're trying to do is move away from that uh, saturian nature and move more in to this moon cancerian nurturing way so we if you're the, the biggest tips i can give is let go that's that's a really big thing we have to walk away from what we thought we knew what we thought we wanted what's not working out anymore our, literally our old selves are dying like that that's what's happening like we are merging into a brand new paradox and uh, a paradigm and and it, and it is a paradox because there's this level of being uncertain and it's like the the body the energy is here in front of us and our physical body just hasn't yet met that and for some people it's it's very muddy it's very messy it's very murky and i get that you know i get that for me personally you know i've been preparing for these times uh, this for me feels like home because a i'm aware of everything i feel like i'm not a passenger at the moment i'm the driver and i think we yeah. should always be the driver of our own lives but without awareness i'm sorry you can't be <laughs> that's the biggest thing yeah. um a self-awareness if you, you if you don't even have awareness of yourself your energy the way you come across your intentions the way you make people feel if you don't come across if you're not aware of any of those things you are not the driver of your life then the awareness of the universe and the synchronicities and the astrology and what's unfolding. I mean, being the driver in that perspective, uh, you know, it, it's, it's life changing. Mm. But the thing is, is that mm. everyone wants to hold on to who they've been, what they've had, you know, old ways. And it's going to take, you know, this next 18 mm -hmm. months to really, uh, to probably, it's going to be challenging. I, you know, I can't lie and say it's not going to be a walk in the park, but you know, I, I just spoke at an event up the coast on the weekend and I said, look, 2018 was the prequel and 2020 is big. 2020 is some really big things. You know, this is, I'm calling 2019 an eclipse year. Like people, you know, how everyone feels in eclipse seasons. Well, all of 2019 is an eclipse. Let's just say that. Okay. So all of 2019 is an eclipse and oh my God, we're nearly in May and that's how quick it's going. We are in a very accelerated time. Um, and so you wait, we've still got eclipse season to come yet. You know, July's eclipse season. So we're in an eclipse year with an eclipse season and January was the first eclipse season. And so many people I know all their wheels came off in January because we had eclipses and they were just like, I thought this was a new year and oh my God, you know, and, and, and a big, I think sometimes I see people, you know, they do new year, new me. And I'm like, hell no, mate, you're the common denominator in every single year of your life. So it's, it's, it, it might be, it's, it's new year, new work, right? It's not new year, new me. It's new year, new work to do. And that's what this year has been about. And one of my quotes from last year that I loved was by Abraham Lincoln. And it was that he was given an ax to chop down a tree. He had six hours to chop down the tree and he used four of them sharpening his ax. And that's the biggest thing here is that how sharp is your ax? You know, how prepared are you? And that's why I've said the spiritual community is struggling with these energies a lot because they're not prepared because they haven't sharpened their ax for the last however many years they've been doing this so-called work. You know, they've been hiding. Mm -hmm. They've been going home to relationships and marriages that they hate. They've been, you know, doing things yeah. that they don't like, but then putting on the show. And unfortunately, that's that that's far more common than people would believe. Unfortunately, I'm not trying to be a yeah. uh, horrible or negative or anything. I just, I like to wake people up to this shit because yeah. this is, you know, this is, this is the time, you know, I've, I've, I do a lot of my processing and stuff in private and, and not, you know, all over Facebook. But the thing is, is that 
my foundation is really, really solid, you know, and, and so many people's aren't and you can feel the people's that aren't. I mean, that's all shining through these days. You know, you, you know true authentic people when you meet them because you feel that. There's no hiding, there's no facade and that goes across the whole board. That's the biggest thing here is that we've got to look at all areas of our lives and be very, very, very honest with ourselves because the destroying that Pluto and Saturn and the South Node are doing at the moment is big. Yeah. It is destroying yeah. anything that is not the truth in your life. And that can be scary mm -hmm. because it means you've got to face yourself. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah so you know, my biggest tips are always let go, surrender, flow. If something is is leaving your life don't try and hold on to it and, and fix it you know i'm not saying that you know you know i'm not saying that if there's a couple of problems don't try and work them out with your partner or whatever but i'm just saying that yeah. um and but there's this element of um and the leo king who i love and follow he's an, an american astrologer but he's he said it ages ago like at the beginning of the year he's like it's like someone getting a, uh, you know, a, a TV and smashing these new TVs into a million pieces and then going, I'm going to try and fix that. Why? Yes. You know, there is a lot yes. of smashed energy. There is a lot of old stories, old stuff that do not, that, that not just don't longer serve you, but actually can't go into this new world with you. And until you let them go yes. and until you truly honestly just go, that story is not flying with me. You know, for me to even talk about last week, I go, huh, what was happening last week? Because I'm here right now. That's where I'm talking to you from this space in my life right now. And one of my amazing yeah. teachers, Justin, who developed the liquid crystals, he, he said that mm -hmm. he grew up knowing that every night he went to bed, he died. And every morning he was reborn. Mm -hmm. And you know what, when I heard that yeah. years ago, it was about five years ago, that changed my life because I was like, mm -hmm. that is so unbelievable. So it means that, if you haven't sort of let go of what someone said or how your husband did this or whatever, and you carry it on the next day, these stories just become huge mountains of, of shit. And that's why there's a, yeah. you know, this is a big, a big time of purge. It, it, we are in the biggest purgy sort of year that there is really realistically. So letting yeah. go of the old story or what that person like, life is just so short and I just don't see the point in that sort of stuff, you know, and okay. oh, no. yeah, I could talk about that for another hour. Yeah. <laughs> I was saying to a friend last week um, when I was home, you know, it's, you know, forgiveness is not about the other person. Forgiveness mm. is for yourself and we can't carry that shit in our body. Like it feels hideous it feels horrible mm. and we just and we need to understand and break down and be responsible for our anger mm. and not suppress everything like we've been so conditioned to do and i just want to in that moment i want to really invite everybody to being that this year is as you said it's it's a year of the whole year it's an eclipse and it really is like I feel, and I've said it so many times, I feel like it's everything is just dissolving, mm. you know, and um, and I have been absolutely feeling it and doing the work and just going in. Um, so I feel like this year with that is, as you said, sharpening the axe. But with that is for everybody watching is do the work, for yourself mm. and let the rest of not just this year and beyond, but I feel like this year is it's crucially important that we do the work and integrate it without trying to project it and teach it and share it, but just us first, mm. everyone else. Um, mm. And I, there's a real, you know, a real self honoring in that. And I was talking to Dane Thomas a couple of weeks ago on the show mm. and, uh, and, you know, and he was saying the exact same thing, you know, and you said it earlier as well is um, instead of trying to just regurgitate what we learned at that weekend retreat mm. or whatever, it's just let it integrate, mm. let it, it's not, you know, it's not sinking in and, no. um, you know, 
who we are off stage needs to be who we are on stage. And, exactly. You know, stage, whether, whether you speak on a stage or not, is mm. as soon as you step out of your bed every day, you're on. That's your stage. Exactly. You know? That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah, life, the world, the, the earth, you, you walking the earth is your stage. And, yeah, if, you, you, if you're hiding behind masks and facades of shit that isn't really real, when you go and try and teach after your, you know, weekend retreat or weekend course, I mean, I, I, one of my astrologer friends shared something the other day that was like, oh, Susan, I'm psychic because I did a weekend course and I've got a certificate. And it's just like, oh, my God, like this is the, this is the <laughs> funniest thing. Like these are the things that happen. You know, you can't, you know, I teach an astrology course and you're, you're not an astrologer after six weeks. You're not after 12 weeks. You're not even after 12 months. You know, this has taken me decades, decades and decades and decades. And it is in the work. And, and, and I know that Henry Rowland said something about, you know, you know, talking and if you don't have experience, it means nothing, you know, and, and I, and I, and I agree. And I wish I had the quote or we'll find the quote. It's, excuse me. It's a really Mm -hmm. amazing quote that I've quoted before. It's from um, Danielle Laporte's white hot truth book, actually, which is another fantastic book. And it's, and you know, and I love Dane Thomas Mm -hmm. as well, because he's very, you know, about that sort of stuff too, because it is about the integration. Mm -hmm. It takes, it takes years and years and years to integrate and to even know yourself. So yeah it, enough with the trying to teach everyone everything I mean Elizabeth Gilbert when I went and seen her a few years ago she's like if you're going to write a book please don't write a book about us trying to change like don't you write a book about trying to help me she goes we don't need that like write a book for yourself write a book for you and that's the biggest thing is when there's no separation between who you are and what you do you're in alignment right you're in alignment yeah. that's the thing you know I've, I've i've often talked about sort of heart-based businesses and stuff and and i can mm-hmm. you know people can say everything but i can see their life through their energy i can see their life through what's going on around them like your life speaks volumes your words mean nothing and just because you've done yeah. a, a couple of retreats or a couple of you know workshops and it's the same thing you know with the even with the liquid crystals you know I, I, I um, haven't done the millions of things that you can do because I'm integrating, you know, it's about integrating and taking them and understanding them and journeying with them, not just going, oh, I do 50 million things, but I don't actually do 50 million things, right? Like, it's not about all the things. It's about you. It's about the integration of yourself. And you're exactly right with this year. It is very, very crucial to pull back a little bit, you know, ask yourself why, why am I wanting to hold a circle or wanting to be on stage and, or wanting that person's life? Why? Why is that? Yeah. Find the place of fulfillment and, uh, you know, solitary solidity within your own life and how you interact on a day-to-day basis, you know, how you live, you know. And I, I literally drove up the coast yesterday crying in my car just because the land was so beautiful. The sky was so crisp and there was just some cows and the grass. And I often don't share stuff like this, but but this is this is my everyday life. Like I say thank you a million times a day and nature often brings me to tears and and I don't need to get on Facebook every five minutes and tell everyone, you know, because that's, that doesn't mean that you're spiritual. That doesn't mean that you're practicing. That doesn't even mean you're doing the work. It means you're sharing everything with, to get some acknowledgement. Right. So that yeah, this is, it's, it's, true. it's coming back, coming back to you. And, and if you do that, if you work on yourself this year, and let go of things that don't serve you. Be very honest with yourself about things that aren't serving you. As hard as that can be sometimes, it is. The truth, the truth you know, the truth does hurt sometimes. It does. But the, the, the only person you need to hear it from is yourself, you know, at the end of the day. Like, you just need to break down the walls and the, and the layers and the, the things that you've told yourself, you know, continuously to build up this life that you're projecting, even though you're not actually happy. You know, because we don't need, we don't need more people drinking green smoothies and doing yoga at the sunset in their bikini. We're sick of that shit. Like that doesn't mean anything to me, right? You cannot yoga, green smoothie and fucking Instagram filter your life to make it be as good as, you know, you know, as real as like so many people's are that aren't doing stuff like that. It's just, it, it is, it's, it's, it's authenticity and sovereignty at its peak this year yeah absolutely and it's but it's creating that you know like beauty in a box it's it's creating spirituality in a box as well that you know if you're a spiritual person 
you have to, you know, do yoga on the beach at sunset or sunrise mm. and you need yeah. to you know, look like this and yeah. have this practice, only drink green smoothies at this mm. time of the day and, you know, all of these things. And um, mm. it's just, oh, we've just taken our, you know, life, we've just taken, you know, our conditioned life in one area and we're just putting it in another. Like we're actually not shedding anything exactly and um and i feel like you know that's that's where we're at and um my mum used to that was probably the one thing that she drilled into us kids is she wasn't big on quotes but she always said the truth hurts Mm. the truth hurts and Mm. it's something that i always and it can but as you say it's not something that you need to go on facebook and shout about or go and tell everyone about it it's Mm. just for you Mm. It can just be for you. And that is the most important, that's the most potent work is that it's, you know, knowing that it's okay for it to just be just for you. You know, it's okay that, you know, you can have this just for you. And if you want to give something to uh, someone else, go and make them a lasagna and take it around to their house or mm. give them a care box. You know, like there's a gazillion other ways that you can give and share without having to, yeah, regurgitate. Mm. Um, yes. I want to ask you here, here. one last qu- yes. <laughs> um, I want to ask you one last question and that is what is turning you on at the moment? Oh, um, so life as usual is turning me on. Um, just the joy uh, I've just, so I'm, I'm right in this month. May is really big for me. I'm just about to go to Europe for three weeks. Um, so that's just going to be amazing. And I'm just nice. being, I'm just being turned on by the processes of life, you know, you know, having to take my daughters to netball, watching them at netball. It's, it's those things at the moment that are really filling for me and that are really exciting and really monumental for me. I mean, I know they probably are most of the time, but at the moment, that's the question, you know, it is really about me just being in flow, me being, uh, you know, me, I just was sitting down making some liquid crystals uh, and stuff this morning before I jumped on with you. Um, and I was just like, I love my life. You know, I, I love, I'm so grateful for my life. I'm so grateful that I've created this. And um, pretty much just life in general turns me on. You know, I, I've just had an interview with um, Susanna Frioni. Um, she's doing a new um, MILF mm-hmm. podcast. Yes, MILF, yes. And I was on that. And, um, <laughs> you, you know, we were talking about similar things. She's like, Tiani, it's like you're always running warm. She goes, most women are running cold. Obviously, we're talking more about intimacy yeah. and stuff. But she's like, so many yeah. women... Uh, they run cold. Like that's where they're starting. They're starting as cold water. And she's like, it's like, you're always just simmering, you know, you're always simmering. And then it's just like this, or it can go, it it can go a bit down. And I think that that's a a nice way to put me in a way is that I am always loved up and juiced up. Like it doesn't take me much, you know, just, just staring at my husband because he's sexy, you know, I'm just like, Oh God, you're hot. Stop it. Like, you know, just having a hug from my daughters, you know, I do find so much fulfillment in that. And I do find that I'm always running on warm because of that, you know, because I've done the work, you know, I've done the work, I've done decades and decades of work. So this is where you can hover once you become aware and, you know, you can feel free and liberated to just have such a joy filled life in every moment, you know, and, and a big thing I wanted to say, it was something in regards to uh, something you just said, but it was about um, happiness and joy and, 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 and forgiveness. When you talked about forgiveness, all of those things are choices. I think that's a really big thing to remember is that healing doesn't yes. take time. Grief doesn't take time. Forgiveness doesn't take mm-hmm. time. It takes you to choose to do those things. That's what it comes down mm-hmm. to. And, and it's the same thing with happiness, fulfillment, abundance, all those sorts of things. Again, you know, it's a choice. It's a choice to feel and experience those things every day. And, and gratitude, mm-hmm. I can tell you is one of the core things that I loved. If, if, someone comes and sees me and they thought I was rubbish, 
that's totally fine because I dig myself and I don't dig everyone either. Like I don't, some people I listen to because, you know, everyone does Facebook stuff now and I just go, no, no, because, you know, I, not everyone is made for getting out and doing this stuff like you and I, Renee. Like this is in our charts. This is something that we're meant to do. But everyone feels this need to, well, now I've got to do it because they're doing it and everyone's doing it. This will make me money too. No, it won't because you're not made to do this. And when people are watching you, trust me, you are, you know, it's only your five friends watching because they're trying to support you. But the thing is, is that don't try and be like everyone else for the sake of it. You know, that's a big thing. Don't try and be like everyone else for the sake of it. But that's the thing with this, this, you know, this choice, you know, we're choosing happiness and joy. This is, this is, this is what comes from, you know, knowing yourself and, and, and doing the work, I suppose. I don't know where I was going with that, but I always want to just keep talking about a million different things, but. And it's still working on my, oh yes, there we are. <laughs> are you like Yes, yeah, we're back, we're back. I think we both just froze there for a second. We um, did. But I love what you just said then it was, you know, about, you know, simmering. And that is something that I love about hedonism. And I think that that's why it's so important because it's like, it's like my spa, right? It's when you keep it at 38 degrees, it's easy to get hotter, colder, but it's already warm, mm. you know, rather than if you let it cool right down, it takes ages mm. to heat back up. And I think, and for me, that's why, you know, finding that hedonism in every single moment is so important. Um, I did say that was your last question, but I just have one last question <laughs> because you said you spoke about simmering and being juicy and I want to ask you, what is the correlation for you between sexuality and spirituality? Hmm. Uh, okay. So this could, this is interesting. So, uh, so there's one thing I want to say is that I don't agree with spirituality being sexualized and that's what sells spirituality. I don't like that because I don't think that there's a need for it. No. Um, but yep. spiritual, spirituality and sexuality for me is that there is this, it, it's, it's emerging because there's an openness, there's an understanding, there's a trust, there's a divine union. So for me, it's that, yes, with my husband, it's this trust, it's this opening, it's, it, the connection goes so, uh, deep that it's, you know, it can make you cry sometimes, right? Like it's just so beautiful. And and then the love and then merging that with your own physical body, whether you do some dancing or move some, move your hips. And that's, you know, a practice that I've recently more gotten into as well is just, you know, dropping into that feminine a little bit more um, is that, uh, you know, I, I think that, I think it all comes down to as well as that when you, when you let go of the inhibitions and just show up raw, you know. I know so many because uh, I love doing, you know, couple stuff and sex. I love talking about sex and stuff, and you know, and mm -hmm. so many, you know, women are uptight and don't want this and don't want that, and you know, go and check out John Wineland's work if you haven't. If you don't love John Wineland, you know, he's all about what do men crave, and he talks about he did like a little YouTube thing that was about what do men crave. So everyone's always talking about what women crave, and and I loved mm -hmm. that. That was only it's only about like nine minutes or something, but it's so worth checking out because women mm. are so caught up in their own inhibitions and insecurities that but they really need to realize that most men aren't interested in that you know like good deep awakened men not interested in that stuff they're interested in a full-bodied woman who knows who she is and when you know who you are you can expose your soul, right? I think that that's what it comes down to is when you know who you are, you can expose your soul. And then a part of that soul is sexuality, is openness, is, you know, allowing everything to flow and be felt, 
you know, to actually be felt because I think, you know, a lot of women have mechanical sex because, you know, they think that that's what they have to do. And it's like, well, you know what, you're missing out. But the only person that they can tune into is themselves, right? So Mm. you can't change him. You can't change whatever's going on there. You start changing and working on your own uh, spirituality and sexuality merging as one, then all of a sudden you've got a whole different platform to start to elevate your own senses from like all of a sudden you're experiencing you know orgasms or 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 short hot heavy sex or this but it's not this expectation of oh i must have sex three times a week or one time a week or one time a month i mean i've worked with clients who haven't had sex with their partner in months or years or whatever and i'm just like wow like it's it's a part of the the self it's a part of the merging right and it's not everything and it definitely isn't but the thing is is that it's still a part of the whole so when we black out that part you know again there's no softening into that feminine because we are Mm -hmm. feminine bodies women voluptuous all those sorts of things so and and john wineland um you know he he puts he he says some really great things on that little um on that little video that he does about what men are craving and he's like you know we don't want to be treated like a business partner you know we want to be treated he's like he's like we're nearly like dogs you know we want to we want to love you train us to love you but stop with the games and the the mind friggin games and the putting us in the doghouse for one thing that we didn't even know you know what is it there's something like we're 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 doing a test that we didn't even know we were doing like you know they're all in these tests all these men are like in tests and the women are putting them through all this stuff the men's got no idea what's going on you know Uh, tell your man what you want Tell him what you want. You know, everyone thinks, oh, but I've been with him for this many years. He should know. No, because he's not a mind reader. You know, tell him exactly what you expect or what you want or what, you know, where you can change something or whatever. But, you know, don't, don't, he's not less than you, you know, like that's a big thing, you know, meet your man as the king he is and treat him like that. Right. Yeah, Mm. absolutely. So, so. That's a whole different conversation, isn't it? That one. Oh, it is. (laughs) <laughs> it is, you know, it's such an important conversation. You know, mm. it's, I was talking to my friend last week and, and she was blown away when I said we were having a conversation about like self-pleasure and, you know, and, and sex and, you know, uninhibited sex. Mm. And, um, and she said, and I said how Chris and my partner and I are still like fully exploring the realms of, and cause it's just constantly expanding. Yeah. And she was like, but what do you mean? You've been together for 20 years. <laughs> and it's like, it's, it's true. Aww. It's just, it's yeah. so infinite. And I think that most people probably don't even realize that it really mm. is. Um, but I love your description there. I really, really, I it really resonates with me. And, um, I will, I just want to thank you for your time today and I have thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. Mm -hmm. But before we wrap up, I want to just say thank you so much for being you. You are, and everything that I said in the intro um, is, you know, you are pure heart, you are pure passion and you absolutely walk your talk in everything that you do. And I just want to say I feel deeply grateful that you show up in my life, in my feed, and in a way that it really leaves me with so much gratitude for all that you do and all that you offer. And I know the incredible work that you do is extraordinary, Mm. but it is in within those ordinary moments and that's what's actually makes your work so transformational and so beautiful is because you change people's lives because of if all those little micro moments you know mm. and um so your work is so needed and i encourage everybody who is watching to check out your amazing services and I'll put the links to everything um, in the comment box. But thank you so much for today. Thank you so, so much. Really 
deeply, you. deeply humbling. Thank you so much, Renee. And I, I, I feel just the same about you and your extraordinary work that you do and how you show up so raw and vulnerable. And that's probably why we love each other so much, you know, because yeah. a, a vulnerable heart knows a vulnerable heart and, and it's nice to mm. really be able to have had this with you. I'm so glad that we got to do this. So thank you for inviting me on. It's been a deep, deep, deep pleasure. And um, I'm very, very grateful. Thank you so much, gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you to everybody watching. Yes, thank you. I will see everybody next week. But for now, I will say see you later. Thank you Bye, again, beautiful. gorgeous. And thank you, gorgeous. Bye, Bye everyone.